Creating a ban list. The first step is to set up a ban list. Go to Data, select the Global Data tab, and select New List from the Task List. We'll look at a list that I created earlier. I've entered a name for the ban list and a description as well. Choose either Pattern Match or Exact Match. Pattern Match allows the use of wildcards, while Exact Match will only block what is entered. Enter the sites to be blocked using a star as a wildcard and click OK. You will see that the list appears in Global Data. Now go to Policy and select New Policy from the Tasks panel. Enter a name and description for the policy. I'll call this Ban List Policy. Choose your source type. The source for events for this policy is going to be the web proxy, and the event type will be a proxy request. A list of compatible events will appear, in this case only the proxy request event from the www proxy server. Now it's time to build the policy. Firstly drag the source event into the policy window. The first step in the policy will check the request against the ban list, so drag the data list lookup item into the policy. Click the symbol button to choose the parameters to test, and select request URL. Select the list called Ban Sites and click OK. Give the policy element a name and drag a result from the results list. If an item matches on our ban list we will reject it, so choose Reject from the drop down list of options and customize the message that will be sent back to the browser if necessary. For requests that don't match the ban list, choose an allow result. Connect the policy elements, save the policy, and test it. As we can see, a request to nzherald.co.nz is denied with the message that we entered into our policy. Using a file in a ban list and nesting lists. Lists can check the contents of a file for a match. In our list in the data window, Click the button to link the content of a file to this list and browse to the list. Click open and you will see the file appear in the list. Click OK and test a request against the file. As you can see I have Twitter, YouTube and Trade Me. And we'll try a request to Twitter. Again we see access denied by blacklist. Lists can also be nested. Return to the list, click the button to link the content of another list to this list, and select the appropriate list. The advantage of nesting lists is that list items can be added and removed from the policy check easily without needing to enter and delete them each time to make a change. Amazon is on our list of rest restricted sites, so we'll try a request to Amazon.com and again we're denied. Using authentication to apply lists to different users. Open the policy we created earlier. Select multiple policy elements and move them to create room in the policy. Break the connection between the proxy request and the next step in the policy. The first step in the policy will now be to check whether the user is a member of the group authenticated users. So drag a user group check item onto the policy and select authenticated users from the list of users and groups.
If the user is not a member of this group, then they have not authenticated yet, so drag a result onto the policy and select Auth from the drop-down list. Authenticated users need to be tested to see whether they are a member of the Managers group. Drag another user group check onto the policy and select the Managers group from the list. Members of the Managers group will continue through the original policy. Users who are not members of the Managers group will have their request checked against a whitelist. Drag a data list lookup onto the policy and select the whitelist from the drop down. If the requested site does not appear on the whitelist, then the request will be rejected. So drag a result on and select reject. A request for a site that appears on the whitelist will be allowed Connect the policy elements. Save the policy. And we can test it now. And a lookup to wingate.com is allowed.